Hey guys, it's Willie from SmartDayPanda.com. Welcome back. So I just wanted to show you um, uh, options trading on Tastyworks uh, with the Tasty Trade uh, methodology versus um, something called DeFi uh, yield farming. Uh, and DeFi just stands for decentralized finance. Um, and this is still relatively new to, for me. Um, I'm kind of going down the rabbit hole to see if it's worth it or not. Um, and I think now might be a good time to start learning because like the um, digital asset space is pretty much um, down uh, compared to let's say like two months ago. So Bitcoin is roughly half of, of its all time high. I'm not sure if it's um, if it's the start of a bear market or it was just like a, a, a correction uh, by, by uh, crypto assets or digital assets uh, standards. But, but we'll see. Um, and also because uh, in general, like the options premiums, um, if you're selling them, like they're not that high because of the stock, the stock market is pretty much at all time highs. So there's not a lot of fear in the market and premiums have gone down uh, quite dramatically. So let's just say, for example, um, uh, 3M was one of those stocks that I've been uh, um, selling selling puts against and at the time this was just like slightly out of the money and if you look at the uh, the trade price i only was able to collect 310 dollars and right now um i'm underwater so that means i'm actually uh losing some money but i still have some time left um so i have about 27 days i think i'll i'll try to see if i can still collect like 50% of the uh, the profits. Um, for me, the worst case scenario is that I actually get assigned at $200 and hopefully 3M won't be too far below it. And then I'll just like sell some cover calls against it to improve my cost basis. So I wanted to just bring up like um, a, show you guys a spreadsheet um, that I kind of made for myself. Um, just trying to compare and contrast like what I can get um, in like for options uh, premiums versus like if I can uh, yield farm or uh, just like stick it in a uh, uh, a digital asset like savings place. So like the first column is like the the Tastyworks pl um, platform like what I just showed you. So like the the premium um, what I collected three hundred and ten dollars up front, and then right now as of right now the capital requirements is. Three thousand seven hundred sixty-three dollars. So then, that that makes my uh, my return on capital, which is like the premium divided by the capital, uh, roughly about eight point two four percent. Which I think uh, is not like the greatest because I'm selling. Uh, I'm actually in the money uh, right now, and that's kind of bad for me for my position. But I mean, there's, there's a, still a chance that it it, it could uh, turn around. Um, so the per day is, uh, I'm just dividing the, the, the rate that I'm getting or that I expect to get by 365. Um, you could probably ignore the 24 days and 45 days um, for now. Uh, I'm still working through like the calculations to see if it makes sense to me what, if I'm doing it right. So basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to annualize um, uh, the rate that I could get. Um, I'm probably not doing the math right, uh, but anyway, um, the 24 days, I'm just trying to figure out like if it, if I, if I try to um, collect the, the, uh, the premium earlier, uh, because I originally I sold it like 45 days out and per the tasty trade um, methodology, uh, within 24 days, I have to close it out at at roughly like a 50% profit. And um, unfortunately right now it's not working out. So I'm probably gonna have to try to hold it uh, all the way up to like 45 days. Um, and basically uh, in this formula, the, the 45 day formula, uh, I'm further dividing the uh, the return on capital by 45. So that, that gives me like, like, like for every 45 days, I'm, uh, uh, collecting like 0.18% um, uh, based on like the amount of money that I put up. And I'm trying to like kind of uh, compare uh, fairly 
uh, like the per day rates that I would get uh, versus like if I, if I just like left it and like say uh, Gemini earn or if I'm if I take a little bit more risk I can uh, bump it up to 0 0.03 if I decide to do some basic yield farming so let me just show you uh, what I'm talking about because it might, might seem a little confusing for people that are new to um, like the centralized finance or DeFi so let me also bring up uh my one of my browsers um let me see if it's coming up Oh, having a little some some issues here let me just uh and i'm back uh sorry about that i'm um, just messing around with my some of my settings and i think i'm goofed something up uh so i just want to show you again um on the gemini uh exchange uh if you just wanted to, to just park some cash somewhere uh you have a f like two different options uh you can either put it in gemini dollar uh, 7.4 7 uh, APY so that's over a year um, but you do get paid out um, daily so that's that's always a nice thing um, and then you have some other options uh, I think if you just wanted to park some US some US dollar equivalents uh, another choice would be DAI um, and that's also a very uh, popular um, uh, stable coin uh, that's that's roughly like the equivalent of a uh, of a US dollar and you also get paid out 7.4% um, right now I prefer if I'm just holding it um, within Gemini uh, to use like the Gemini dollar because there's no um, I guess like no transaction fee right now as of right now uh, so that's that's nice um, whereas with DAI you have to pay um, every time you you turn your US dollars into into DAI um, then there, there's gonna be like some uh, it's I guess it's kind of like their equivalent of like a commission so uh, just something to be aware of and then let me bring you over to like I guess like how to go about looking at uh, different like DeFi options because there, there's, there's so much stuff out there it could be really confusing um, so I've tried like different um, like dashboards like there's also something called DeFi Pulse um, so it's, it's up to you what you want to try but like for me a uh, DeFi llama um it's just to get a like a sense of the space um so like this is kind of like the whole entire i guess like all the decentralized uh, protocols that are out there uh, at least according to this dashboard so it's about 96 96 97 billion altogether and it dropped you know unfortunately um from i guess like roughly 150 billion from earlier in the year um so i guess like the the digital asset space in general is just like kind of in a correction either a correction or hopefully not in the start of a bear market but um in case we are i'm, I'm i just want to show you like what options you have to to maybe like park some of your cash um so according to like the tvl which is stands for like total value locked like the amount of money that's put in onto these protocols for different purposes so like the right now like the biggest one right now is uh, ave so there's sort of like a um a, a bank uh for, where you can like borrow and lend like different uh different um protocols uh and uh curve is also another uh a big one uh, and, and then like you know so on and so forth i'll let you do your, you guys like do your own research um and then another helpful uh uh i guess like a kind of like a guide um is like uh, uh coin gecko um, and then you can kind of like click on each like coin to kind of like do f like further research like you can go over to like their website directly read their white paper um look at their contracts um, and it, it's quite involved so it's very intimidating so if you guys like want me to do like a further 
or I guess like kind of like show you what I've been learning so far um, because it's really involved um, and it takes some time to kind of get used to all the uh, different protocols and how to transact on on like the the whole space uh, and, and it could be intimidating for some people but for me it's, it's actually kind of fun because uh, it, it's like new stuff um, and you can kind of like like learn about the projects like while you're also like trading or investing at the same time um, so like I like CoinGecko because it kind of gives you uh, some metrics you can kind of like wrap around. Like so, like for example, in the, in the stock market, there's like stuff called um, like the price to earnings ratio. Um, there's a uh, enterprise value divided by uh, earnings before uh, interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. So th there's things like that. Um, so this gives you a kind of like kind of like the uh, I guess like the D5 version of that and it gives you like you know something kind of wrap your heads around to like also compare like uh, against like different projects so I'm looking at like either, either total value locked or like the fully diluted valuation divided by the total value locked um, so it kind of gives you a sense of um, uh, like a sense of like how you can kind of like compare like different projects uh, so right now, I guess like anything below one, what, what kind of um, gives you like kind of like a, a sense of like value. So like like the same thing with like like sort of like a like a PE ratio where like the lower the better. Um, but then like sometimes like you you can't just assume that just because it has a low. Um, like a PE ratio that it's a good project it might be because like the like the earnings are going down so you kind of have to still do do uh do research uh on any of uh, your projects so like uh, like another thing that i was looking at was this like farm project uh so this one has an even lower um uh like fully diluted valuation to total value locked ratio so it's like 0.13 versus point thirty two, but obvious uh, from what I can uh, gather is a is a more I guess like a more reputable. It's been around longer, uh, whereas farm hasn't been a, around as long. I mean, but it's actually kind of funny because they're both pretty new. Um, but I guess like in in terms of like like in the crypto space, like you know, a few months is considered like old um, and established, but um. I mean the whole f the whole space is pretty exciting, um, and there's a lot to learn. Um, and I think there's there's a chance that you know. I don't want to like keep using like throw around like the term like disruption, because I think it's overused a lot. But I think like these type of protocols like altogether, I think it could take a lot of um, market share away from like the tr traditional like banking, uh, and trading. So there there's a lot of potential here. Um, but I don't want to like babble on too long. Uh, so let me like go on to the next thing that, that I'm looking at. Um, and I think, you know, let me just re try refreshing this. So there's something called uh beefy finance that at first I thought it was like kind of like a scam. Um, but it's actually been around for a while too. Um, it, it's been around, um, on like a, another chain called Binance Smart Chain. Um, but that's like from what I gather is more centralized and people tend to prefer more decentralized otherwise you're you're kind of like winding up, up in the same place where um uh where a centralized entity can have more control over your your uh your funds and I think a lot of people are trying to get away from that uh, but anyway there's also a uh I guess like the whole uh, like an ecosystem like like a something called polygon so it's a basically a side chain of ethereum which itself is like another uh, i guess you can think of it as an ecosystem so uh, ethereum kind of started the whole um DeFi, uh, i guess like revolution if you want to call it from um from last year but the transaction costs have, have been so high that you know other ecosystems have started to step in and take away some some market share so like binance Binance Smart Chain would be would be considered like another 
like an ecosystem. And Polygon is sort of like a own mini ecosystem, but it's um, a side chain to Ethereum. So if you want to play around with it, you have to kind of bridge money back and forth between these two ecosystems. And there's actually more coming up. Um, so I guess like as I learn more, I'll probably share share more with you guys because it's there's a lot of potential here, but there's also a lot of risk. Um, there's there's also like a lot of um, scammy projects out there, so you just have to like be careful, like um, do your research. Um, so for example, um, let me bring you over to one section over here, and the reason why I brought this up is because I. Die and USDT or two stable coins. So there's, I don't want to say no risk. I want to say there's less risk than, than say, um, some of the other projects um, that, that that I scrolled through, um, because nine point ten percent by, I guess, the crypto standards is, is pretty pretty low and it's not that exciting, but it's still a lot better than like. Um, say just like sticking your money in the bank um, and I'm not gonna go through um, like how to go about um, adding liquidity and buying tokens and all that kind of stuff there's actually plenty of other uh, youtubers that, that cover this I, I bring this up because I want to help um, other maybe like stock traders or option traders like there's other options out there like maybe if like you know the stocks and, and options are like like where the returns aren't as good good anymore where this could be a, like another like um like a parking spot for you for your cash so what i like about beefy finance is it gives you the apy up front and it also gives you like kind of like how much you can compound like daily um and that's where like i kind of use I, I plop like some of those numbers into like the uh my spreadsheet from earlier so and the reason why I want to kind of like warn you, I mean, there's there's plenty of other projects out there, but I mean, some of these are kind of ridiculous. For example, like this APY over here. Um, if I'm reading this right, this is a 866 trillion like percentage. And this, you know, I mean, just based on the name Polypup, it might be like trying to cash on like some of the, um, like these weird like dog coins, where it's like, it just looks really scammy. So like these APYs, um, like they're probably not going to like last very long um, because like uh, the, the bad part about DeFi is that there's like a lot of what they call rug pulls. So rug pulls like when they, um, you get your, you know, you put in your money and then, you know, after like a certain amount of time, like they'll either just like you know they'll they'll uh, put some some code in the project where actually they take out like the developers um will actually take out your money so it's basically like like just like 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 a daylight robbery it's just ridiculous um and then there's also what they call um soft rugs where um like the project will be around for a while but then like some after a while like the uh the profits die down and the developers just leave so it's not as malicious but it's still kind of like a jerk move because like you know people were kind of like depending on these projects to like give them like extra yield um and then they, they just walk away uh so that's not cool um and then like so you know i guess like just use like your some some common sense like if the the yields look too good to be true um there's, there's probably something like wrong I mean, like, you know, for, for example, there's a, I mean, I guess, like, the coin is called fish, so, um, and according to some people, like, they argue that it's, it's actually not a scam, it's just, uh, uh, it just looks, you know, kind of suspicious, um, and then quick squap it, itself is a, is a reputable project, but um, like fish is actually cool. Um, let me just bring it up uh, while I polycat finance. 
So fish is like the kind of like their like the house token for for this project, um, and like opinion is kind of divided whether this is like a a scam or like a future scam. But I just want to show you. Um, uh, it's. I don't want to say anything mean because like I'm I haven't I haven't dared to put my money in this project so far, but there's there's a lot of projects where like um they have like deposit fees and that to me like if you wanted to just like um like kind of like farm your tokens to and to earn extra yield you have to put up like money up front and there's no guarantee that uh for like for example they say they have audits um so this one's in progress and then um obelisk one two and the tech rate um this is one of the less awful farms i would say like i i'm i'm a little bit leery um but again it's up to you um so was like, like for example recently iron F finance was like a it was just like a really kind of shady project um i actually lost a little bit of money on this uh but the good thing is like i only put in like a small amount of money like i didn't like like if you want to like play around with some of these farms, you know, just like use some common sense. Like don't put all your money in there. Uh, maybe put like try out like a hundred dollars at a time. Uh, because like the um the good thing about the polygon, like the whole uh ecosystem, is that the transaction fees are are less than a like like a penny. So if you're just like messing around, um, just trying to get a feel for like how these things work, um. That's what I would, um, you know, th I mean, that's, that's what I'm doing. Uh, I can't, you know, control like what you guys do. Like, you know, none of this is, you know, financial advice or anything like that. Uh, but it's just like, you know, just like, uh, I try to tell people to use some common sense. Like, don't, don't put all your money into like these things. Um, but you know, again, as I learn more and as like the, uh, the space like matures, uh, I think there could be a lot of potential, um, you know, once we get past all these, like, crazy, like, you know, these, these, these like, weird projects, like, like, Pop Fish and, you know, you know like, Poly Doge and this kind of stuff, like, it looks really goofy. Um, but I think, like, once things mature, uh, we can see a lot of, like, uh, like, a lot, and especially like, once a lot of, like, scam projects leave, um, that'll leave, like, a lot of good projects and you know a lot of profit potential and i just want to show you guys also like another um maybe a helpful resource um rug doc uh so there i think it's you know started by like a like an actual doctor and she she also like enjoys like uh playing around um in this space um and she helps like warn people against like you know potential like malicious code, uh, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, and it, and it's, it's it's a free resource, and you can kind of like, and they classify things where like the code might be high risk, um, and low risk, and it, and it tells you like kind of like a brief synopsis of what, what the um, of what the uh, the project is, is about. Uh, so this could be like something. I mean, I. Most of these projects don't interest me because they they all look look the same and they're they're basically like copy and paste projects, um, and I try to just like stay away from them because uh, it seems like it could be like a like a like a waste of time, um, and then also because like you know like some of these are like, you know the cities like it it's high risk, so you know. Uh, so I'm glad like there's people out there that that care enough to to warn people not to like get too carried away. Um, so I think that's about it for now. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys like kind of like a, maybe like a brief intro um, into like um, what I'm thinking, where like places where I'm potentially thinking of like parking my money. So um, in addition to options training, like you know, because sometimes like like when like around the summertime like things get really slow um 
and you, and if you just want to like find like other places to park your money or or like learn more about um different ways to make money uh so i think this could be helpful um so if you want more like videos like this just let me know and um if you guys can uh give this a like and subscribe uh that would be really appreciated uh, so thank you and have a great one guys